Hello, Karan, and welcome to Galata Plus. Hello. Next year, it's going to be 25 years since Kuch Kuch Hota released, since yes. you became a filmmaker. Yes. And in 25 years, you've made only six feature films. Yes. Does it feel that you've underperformed as a director? Underperformed in terms of numbers? Not, not creative. Uh, no. I'm not talking creatively on numbers or no, whatever. But, I'm it talking is. but in terms of the number of films. No, that... I'm also talking creatively. I would like to say I've underperformed both as numbers and quality. There's no justification really because if I wanted to, I could have done so much more. But genuinely, the reason why I made fewer films was because when I lost my dad in, um, in 2004, um, I was, had done Kabhi Kushi, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai and, and Kalona, if you notice, in quick succession. Kalona, though I have not directed the film, but I was a very much a creative part of That's that right. journey. So those happened really fast. If you remember the real gaps came right after that is because I inherited a studio, a production house, I could call it a production house at that time, which I needed to expand and I because I was the single fulcrum of the creative energy within my organization, um, I had to do a lot of work. There was no support that we had. Today we have project development teams. You know, you have people to support you. Those days it was just, you were the own karta dharta of your decisions. And then I had a Purva Mehta, the CEO was handling the finance, administration and legal stuff. We were just two of us, you know, yeah. kind of like it seemed like a startup all over again. It seemed like it was always my dad who did everything. Yeah. We were just like, I was just creative. So a lot of the years went in doing so much of the work that I had never done before. I was never trained to do it. My father really spoiled me silly and he gave me everything on a platter and I was like, I really missed that support and I had to create that support for myself. So that's why I couldn't make very many movies. But right. now I realized consciously and again, again between 2016, the, it was an external issue. I prepped Takht for nearly three years. Right. And then the pandemic hit and I couldn't make it. And it was a very, very, very sad and shattering moment for me at that time because I put in my heart, soul yeah. into the into the prep of that film and then the pandemic hit and it just seemed impossible to mount that film at that time. So I quickly developed Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani which is what I'm directing right now. But I'm ready to direct even next year. Like Rocky or Rani releases February. I'm going on the sets in March. Nice. That's my plan. And I'm going to go one after the other now. I'm turning 50 this May, Barry, and I, by the time I'm 60, I want to make another seven movies. Nice in this decade. I want seven movies directed by me. Now, why I say I've underperformed creatively? Because I have. To me, I don't really ask an audience that. Some could love it, some could hate it, some could be indifferent to my cinema and I'm completely uh, okay with all three. I feel personally I haven't made that film that I can proudly say should and deserves to be in the archives of Indian cinema. We have an archive. Suppose you make a list of 100 archived special films across decades. I don't think any of my films deserves to be on that list. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to eat humble pie or be self-deprecating. It is what I believe the truth is. There is no Lagan I have made. In my opinion, one of the best Hindi films. There's no Satya I have made. Again, one of my most, like, I have a lot of love for that film. Similarly, there is no Rangde Basanti. That is a socially relevant film that moved mountains. Yes, I came close with trying to touch upon an issue with My Name is Khan. I feel it's a beautiful film, but I still don't feel that I, I, I went exactly where I should have. So anyway, that's the truth that underperformance is something that I believe very strongly has been my report card. Am I feeling dejected, delusional? Uh, am I at all bogged down by this fact? No, inspired and completely raring to go into my right. 2.0 version of my life. Right. I would actually disagree with that because I think you actually moved from the current George that you were and also the era that was. They liked all that melodrama, they liked all that all that kind of stuff. Sure. And then slowly things changed, right? I thought you brought a beautiful balance to Aydil Amushkil. Yeah. I just found it a wonderful combination of the old Bollywood and the new Bollywood. And which brings me to this question is like, your, your core has always been Indian. That's something that, that I think very, very few directors have today. Otherwise, you, you're watching a little bit of uh, gravitation towards a more westernized kind of film, uh, filmmaking. Do you think that's why uh, a movie like Pushpa is doing so well? Because people crave that kind of thing they couldn't get? So it's strange because I think Hindi cinema began this type of syntax 
you know, with Mr. Bachchan. You know, Salim Javed created this anti-establishment, right, right. angry young hero. Also wrote in many movies, very strong roles for the women. Uh, strangely, even the movies where uh, the men were leading it, and that was the norm in those days, the women all had jobs in movies, which actually very strangely, heroines never had jobs assigned in movies. They were just there, like they were decorative pieces. And it used to bother me even then. But in Salim Javed's work, they were always... Yeah. They always had a profession. See Hema Malani and Trishul and you know, and so many, even, even Basanti, like you saw what she did. Yeah, and she, she was like a job, like it was an assigned job, which was strange. It's strange for me to think that it's it's something novel, but it was then. They created the, the this character, this syntax of this mass masala packaged hero who walked in, broke a few things, said dialogues, dialogue bazi, all that. Yeah. We ourselves changed tide in the 90s because it happened with Suraj Bajatiya's Mene Pyar Kya Slightly in 89, going to Hum Aap Kya Kaun in 94, Dil Wale Dulanya in, in, in 95, Dil To Bagale in 97, Kuch Kuch Hota in 98, right up to Tev Das in 2001. Our hero became a lot more emotional, vulnerable. He was weeping in every climax. He wept and wept and wept and wept. He didn't fight anyone. He just wept. So it was Aditya Chopra, it was me, it was Bansali that made the hero vulnerable. They took the, the, the whatever and we gave a lot of empowerment to the female character. Characters. Of course, the politics of Kuch Kuch Hota are questionable if you think of the wokeness era that we live in today. But the roles were strong for the women. Then we went into a phase where the year 2001 happened, Langan and Dil Chata Hai. And then we realized that the syntax of cinema should be new age. Because Dil Chata represented the millennials of that time and Lagan broke cinematic boundaries. Right, right. Chandani Ba was in that year, but yet it had Gaddar and Kabhi Kushi, but we didn't look there. We looked like all the awards and rewards went to Gaddar and uh, to Dil Chata and Lagan, rightfully, they deserved it. Then we realized that Ramde Basanti came, Tari Zameen Par came, Chakde India came, My Name Is Khan came after that. And I was like, everything is new age cinema. It's only in 2010 when Dabang came. And uh, you realize that Dabang is representative of that mass hero that we haven't done. But yet, by then, we had lost filmmakers who could actually do that. So, in the meantime, while I'm talking about the evolution of Hindi cinema, in Telugu cinema, they had held on to the syntax that we had possibly created in the 70s. Held on to it, worked over on it, held on to it so strongly, so they had uh, that syntax alive till today, till Pushpa. Hindi cinema is starved of that syntax. We still have an audience that loves it. We still love the entry, the song sequences, the dialogue bazi, the tashan between characters. We love all that, but nobody's doing it. Rohit Shetty probably is the only person who does it. So when Raja Mali does it in his way, you're swept. When Sukumar does it in his way, we are swept. You know, when Alu Arjun is already a satellite superstar, and now he's a pan-India star, it's safe to say he's probably the biggest star today because he's cutting across all audiences. You are absolutely right when you say we are starved for that syntax. We don't know how to do it. Filmmakers, and I'm not saying that's a wrong thing, it's a bad thing, it's just not a thing anymore. Yeah. I cannot find a director who has this and pulls it off with commercial narrative with narrative. Right. You'll get the commas, you won't get the narrative. You'll get the punches, but you won't get the flow of the film. You know, you can't eventually get everything. You know, Rohit many a time has hit that combination right. You know, you'll get the combination of creating that hero and giving him a narrative. He's done it in Simba, he's done it in Suryaman, she's done it time and again. You could love his cinema, not like it, that's your prerogative, but you can't deny the box office. Right. I mean, of his movies. We need many more such filmmakers and go back to the roots of Hindi cinema. Where did it all begin? Where did that love start from? Right. And why have we started now trying to make edgy thrillers that have Western syntaxes or trying to make films that are layered and layered and layered and layered and like, you know, and I know that I myself am making those movies. Nothing wrong with that. But now you do have a digital uh, a platform for anything that perhaps may not find theatrical love. You have platforms and platforms to support your content. So make all the stories you want. But understand, if you want the big audiences to come into those massive theatres across the country, then you've got to think big. You've got to think the syntax of commercial mainstream cinema. And you have to do that with a certain flamboyance and aplomb that seems organic and real and not forced. Three big hits after the, the you know, the theatres opened have been Gangubai, Suryavanshi and Pushpa. Pushpa. They are very much in the dialogue-bazi Indian kind of mode. 
So are we seeing maybe change in the ecosystem where a Gehraya would go to an OTT platform, whereas the theatre audience would go to watch these kinds of films? Absolutely. You go right in the middle, you will land in the middle. Your content sometimes could be neither high concept with scale or, or big event film. If you're going in between, then your business will be in between. You have what to what is in between? Could be anything. Could be all the other subgenres. You know, right, right, you want right. to do a quirky thriller. You want to do a um, slice of life film. Uh, you want to do um, a love story that doesn't have scale but that has conversational, like a conversational love story. You're, you're talking about a niche horror film. You're talking about many. I'm talking about these are what I call the other genres. Many of these genres. And if you have it and understand, your business may not go to that extent. You can still release it theatrically, it's your prerogative. Nobody can take that away from you, but you should think twice. For example, let's just see, a film has to have that connect in that made to this country. Like Kashmir Files is not made on the budget like a lot of other movies, yeah. but it's probably going to be cost to profit the biggest hit of Indian, of yeah. Indian cinema. I read um, uh, Box Office India and they said that such a movement hasn't happened since Jess Santoshi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, since 1975. And I'm like, you've got to acknowledge that there, there is something that is connecting with this nation and academically you have to watch it. You know, you have to watch it to, to absorb, to learn from it that, look, there is this movement that has happened. It's no longer a film, it's a movement. And you have to understand that, does your film have that, what it takes, what you're writing? Yeah, you make what you want, make any film you want. Stories must be told. But understand, it's not wrong if it needs to go straight to a digital platform. You're still going to get your viewership. When Geraya was seen, Deepika, Shakun and me, we realized this film has to be a digital film. Because theatrically, it may not do the numbers, you'll get a report card. And then you'll grab away from the people who will have loved it and put it on a pedestal. You could have, it had polarized re uh, reviews, had polarized uh, responses. But I feel like that polarization would have been a conversation because it would have been annulled by a box office number. Right. At least today, you play on that polarization. Uh -huh. You didn't like it, I liked it, he didn't like it, she loved it. We, let's have a conversation. The moment I give you a report card, a number, oh, it did X number, you're like, flop away. Yeah. Once it's a flop, even the polarization conversations just go out yeah, of the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why should you allow that? For example, there are such movies who have performed. You know, like say there's a film that's done very well on Netflix called Haseen, uh, Haseen Dilruba. Yeah. Now, it may not have done, uh, the rec may not have, I don't know, but it's loved on Netflix. Yeah. You can, it's already, you can call it a success. Right. So that's why I think filmmakers, storytellers have to be very careful with what they put out. Hot Star dropped a film called A Thursday. Done very well. I can ch check all, it's on all the charts. Doing very well. Would it have done that same number? May not have, theatrically. So they're very good. You're getting the love, getting the applause, you're getting the recognition. You call it a success and move on. There's no report card. Theatres give you a report card. Oh, bhaiya, you can't run away from. Now, going back to the question of you know, you want to do more uh, as a director. You are on television, you're this host, you're doing all these other things. But you still consider your primary identity as that of a filmmaker? Yes. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Everything else is just pocket money. Okay. I do a lot of those things for the love of yeah. making the money. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to lie and say I'm doing it because I'm really passionate about judging a reality show. Of course, I'm good at, at, at being somebody who can offer my judgment. But it's also this, that decision is driven commercially. I can't start telling you that I'm really there to, you know, understand the talent of the world or the universe. Of course, I, it, I, you gain a lot of perspective when you watch it, but you're also doing it commercially. And that is true for anyone who does these things. Right. Hosting right. television shows, performing at live events. Is anybody doing it for the craft and art of it? No, you're doing it because it's a subset of what you can make. You know, we are here to make the money to leave a legacy for our children or have a lifestyle that you used to. Why should you be apologetic about it? Right. So I'm like, yeah, if it's sometimes it's, you're driven by various things. But do I make a movie for money? No. That is something I will never do. I may make money off it and that's great. But is that my only reason to make a movie? Not at all. Right. I believe Make all the money you want through these other subsets, but keep the purity of creativity intact when it comes to your work. But speaking mentally, uh, as, in, as in mental space, when all of this is kind of happening, does it affect the filmmaking? Because it's like, not in the sense of, it's going to take that much more time to develop a script, or you may feel very tired after, like judging a reality show, you might not have something, you know, that kind of stuff. You asked that, Barry, and um, I have given that a thought. Uh, all I can say is when my mind is ticking, my mind is ticking. Okay. So when my mind is occupied with things, I'm actually more productive. 
the moment you make me do one thing, I will write the worst film. I will be uninspired and I, will, I need to be on a treadmill in this life. If you make me static, I will not be able to be creative or not be able to be productive. Right. It doesn't work with me. So the reverse happens. You send me to the mountains to write a script or to a really quiet area and say you have three months write it, nothing will happen. You make me jam pack my day and I'll come out with five ideas at the end of the day. It's just the way I function. I'm not saying that I can multitask, time management is a skill set I have. I'm not saying any of the above. I'm just saying that when I'm on a non-stop role, is when I can actually roll. What exactly is, in your definition, a pan-Indian film? Every film that is made big in one language doesn't necessarily have to be dubbed in five other languages. You have to see what is the cultural context of your film. What is the syntax of your film? Is it something that a Telugu audience, Tamil audience, Malayalam audience, Kannad audience will like? There are some bigger, larger than life set piece cinemas with that with the with the with the tonality of emotion that is universal. Bahubali can connect to you no matter which part of the country you come from. But not every film will. Like I'm telling you honestly, I'm making Rocky or Rani's a film. I believe that should be remade. But it should not be dubbed in five languages. It is meant for a Hindi audience and the Hindi speaking diaspora or people who may watch it who don't understand Hindi but that might be a niche so should I be dubbing this in Telugu Tamil? No but the story is such that I believe very strongly was telling in fact uh, my friend Rana and I told him I said this film you should actually make you know you, I'll say, share the content with you the screenplay with you it's a very, the concept is such that I'm sure will work as a Telugu film it'll work as a Tamil film could work as any language film because it's got a very simple one line that actually beautifully translates across the nation but this one's syntax and this one's um, uh, conversational quality is very based in the north of this country and you know it, it should definitely only be a Hindi film I believe that when every film everyone is dubbing it because it's become a fashion it's not going to work but when you say that you're giving it to Rana to make it in Telugu or you're giving it to somebody else to make it in Tamil or whatever it is. Doesn't that automatically make your film something that connects across India? Yes, but not with the way I've treated my subject. It needs an adaptation, right? Okay, right. Okay, so it, it, won't, it, it won't be the exact same film. No, you need it to would, adapt. Yeah. There are so many multiple films that we buy rights for and you adapt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not every film can be made. You can't serve this dish in the same way. Right. You have to... The cultural context will be different if right. you make it in another language. Because right. this is, the, my film is deeply uh, immersed in two culture, cultures, a Punjabi culture and a Bengali culture. So obviously when you adapt it and make it in Telugu, you'll have to then do it accordingly. Right, right, right. Now, Ajit Thakur, uh, who's the CEO of the Telugu app AHA, yeah. uh, he said that you have to make a film today that appeals to the rickshaw driver and the man who owns an Audi. That's when true success happens. Is that something you believe in? He is talking about cutting across all demographics, pretty much saying the same thing. Right. But you have to know that while this, while you can say this, uh, was the rickshaw driver watching movies ever? He may not be. You have to cut across to that avid film lover right. who's watching every movie or watching the good movies. You can't just say that I want from this demographic to that demographic. Because right. maybe there's a demographic that never watches movies. Then why am I going to make that movie? He's not going to be interested. I need to make movies for people where there's a base of X amount of people that give that blockbuster film. Say, if you do the data, okay. These many people stepped out to see Bahubali. Biggest hit in Hindi, 512 crores. That base should at least come and now add to that base. That's our desire for every big film that comes out. First appeal to that base. Don't go looking for audiences that you never had. Look for that base that will that will all stepped out in abundant numbers to watch that film. They exist today. They are that base. But there are certain audiences that are not going to watch your film. Right. No matter you may make classic of Indian cinema, they're not good. It's not that thing. Movies are not that thing or maybe Hindi cinema is not that thing. There, there are so many of these Gen Z kids and all. They don't watch Hindi movies. <laughs> they don't care and it's sad. You know, it's sad because it's such a part of our culture. It's yeah. a part of our fabric. But they don't want to because there is a certain digital viewership. But this is very tiny. I'm talking about a 1%. You know, there are so, they, are, they are so absorbed by the worlds of euphoria and, and the worlds of, uh, you know, all the shows that are available on all the OTT platforms that they've stopped going to watch Hindi cinema. Would you say that in a way, 
the pan indian film always existed because there was a time aradhana shole yeah. they were hits across the country people who didn't even know the language uh, you know went and watched films like that like so that's because each individual region created their own cinema and gave it that certain stature and quality right it was initially hindi cinema for the longest time so that's why everybody didn't have options when then the tamil industry went high chennai was the first base then the base moved for telugu cinema to hyderabad that movement happened also in the 80s right 70s like late 70s 80s it wasn't a movement earlier to the extent that it is now today so their own regions like marathi does so much more work punjabi does so much more work today at one point the regions weren't that active right the country was hindi cinema was the was the go to for movies and so, I, i guess it was also the only thing that was released throughout yes yeah. and so that time the option was only that there weren't too many other films made there were films always in every right. region but right. few and far between when the south just went into overdrive mode and rightfully so because they had the talent they had the resources they were self made self sufficient and told such amazing i remember watching some of the most fantastic tamil movies that were even remade at that time you know a lot of the them were made again the original of sargam is so good you know i've seen the original of sargam and, and it was then many other such films then of course there was the whole 80s movement where all the justice choudhrys and mawalis and maqsads and himmat walas were also made and remade in hindi but as i said in the 60s and up to the mid 70s that traffic wasn't coming out of other regions speaking of the 80s one of my favorite scenes in all of your films is when uh, ranbir kapoor wakes up in the morning and <laughs> puts on his playlist and it's pyar ka tohfa <laughs> or something tohfa, like tohfa 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 <laughs> <laughs> because i look at i'm an 80s kid yeah. like i grew up in, like predominantly i am i'm 1972 born but i was obsessed with those songs tata ya tata ya is to dance to the tohfa tohfa i've seen tohfa five times in the theater <laughs> I mean, I and I wept when Sri Devi passes passes away at the end of the film on that bedroom scene. I still remember. We wept, wept, wept. Mang bharo sajna and I've seen films that not even have that that have not even done well. Mehengi mehendi rang laegi which had Rekha ji in it. And I mean, I have gone mad in that in those in that entire phase. I think I watched all those movies. I was obsessed. And that kind of reflects in in many ways. It goes back to the point that you said if you want to become a director. then you have to watch yes all of this you and have kind to of bad yeah. good great watch it all right how can you not watch i get appalled when i meet people from this generation say i have not seen chole and i'm like please leave <laughs> like get off the set you not seen chole you don't have a right to exist it's pretty much a textbook in the mainstream world of cinema so i'm like in hindi and in indian cinema it's 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 one of the greatest textbooks i mean you know it's yeah, got it's, everything it's, it's, actually, it's got yeah, everything yeah, how can yeah. you not say how can you not watch chole why are you an ad What is your job to be an AD? Is just to kind of watch stuff and know and be aware of who's who. You are very close to your father. You've always dedicated your films to him, and yeah. you've spoken so much about him. You've never made a father-son movie. Kabi kushi kabi gum. It's father-son. It's yeah, but it's also a lot of other things. It's yeah, like yeah. yeah. Well, it's not just a father-son. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I haven't. Yeah. Uh, I had a very uncomplicated, completely no baggage, full of love. absolutely nothing like many other father and son conflicts and dynamics my was such a healthy relationship when something is so healthy there is no angst there's, there's no, no angst. angst there's no story to tell i have no story to tell about a father and son but just that there was abundant love and joy and that you know the only story i could connect with is the lo- losing of a parent you know because right. i had but i had such a healthy normal <laughs> like like it was crazy like I hugged and kissed my father till the last day. I mean, sons and fathers have such weird silences, <laughs> weird awkwardness, no communication. The mother is always the intermediate mediator between that dynamic. I don't have any such problem. My ma- father and I, in fact, sometimes used to gang up on my mom, like it was the reverse of that. We were very, very close. It was healthy. There was, there was, there was no chink in that armor. What do I tell you? Because yeah. I find a story doesn't come from pain. Then that's not a story. That's your Adele Mushkil. Yeah, yeah. Adele Mushkil is personal to me because yeah. I've seen heartbreak. I yeah. felt it. It was a tarfa love, and it broke my heart into a zillion pieces. There was a story. This is uh, for me one of the greatest melodramatic scenes in Indian cinema. You first have Ranbir go into Anushka's house and kind of you know see those plants and the the the, the flower pots and things like that. Yeah. And it comes back at that. After yeah. Channa Mere, uh, it, it uh, comes up, comes back at a very crucial moment when he says, "This is what it feels like." Yeah, 
I mean, it's it's melodrama at its purest. How do you put that together? Like when you, when when you think of a film, there was a scene that I wrote in earlier where he's weeping because he's feeling he has a heartbreak when Lisa Hayden cheats on him, and he's like, you know, मेरे दिल के टुकड़े ज़ करके छोटे-छोटे ज़ घूम रहे हैं मेरे इर्द-गिर्द देनो. And she's just looking because she's had a broken heart. Right. She's been like in a turbulent relationship. So she's just sipping water, and she comes and tells him, कि क्या जानते हो तुम प्यार के बारे में? You know what do you mean? तुम she says तुम उस गली से गुजर you know she says तुम उस गली से गुजर तुम मेरी जान उस गली से गुजरे भी नहीं you know so she says laid down she just sees what she has she has like a dumbbell lying there or whatever and she says it actually physically hurts right it hurts you know it absolutely hurts and it pains and uh, and she puts that and she says what is this ah and she takes it off and she says this is like uh, uh, like uh, the girlfriend Lisa you know and she says this is heartbreak this is Lisa. This is how this is Lisa. <laughs> so when he feels that heartbreak, because he realizes his love, and he's broken into a million pieces, and I use the gamla because that's what she had brought to him with the thorns. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was kind of iconic and it was just like I thought those were layers. And I'm glad you caught it, but I was like I thought ये कोई पकड़ेगा नहीं. Yeah. I just wanted him to do the same thing. That now you know I'm I'm agreeing. This is Alize. This is Alize. This is Alize. Now screw you! I love you, and you're, you're marrying another man. Yeah. And he walks out. If not performed the way Ranbir did, maybe that scene would have just fallen flat. Yeah. Maybe it would have been too much. I think he brought in so much emotional gravitas yeah. to yeah. that moment that he made it believable and connected. So it's also about the actor. You know how you can push an envelope, which is what, like, say, Bansali did with Alia Bhatt. He's given us such high theatrical moments, but she has a tendency of, of, of I think, absorbing it, making it yet theatrical, yet real, and yet connected. And I think he understood that about her. Yeah. So it's who you actually give acting moments like this to, you know, somebody who's an actor who can cross the boundary of going beyond and acting and coming across melodramatic may not be the right fit. I knew Ranbir would be the right actor to do something that is so overtly melodramatic. Right. When you mention it, it it was a surprise to see Alia in. Uh Gangubai, because one you'd never really seen her that way, and also Kansari's uh, acting style is not really naturalistic acting. It's, no. it's a kind of dance. It's a kind of performance art. It's the scene where this man kind of bows down, and she kind of you know taps his uh, uh, you know like like him like uh, chalo jao you know yeah. kind of a thing. And it was it was shocking to see that she got him. Troll me if you like, and I'm still going to say it because it's the truth that she's the finest actor we have. And I'm saying this across genders. Uh, I mean, like, I am somebody who loves her deeply, but there's just so much respect. And when I saw the film, Baddy, I swear, called her, and I, I, I was choking because it was not just the film; it was her performance in the film that moved me to the extent it had. And I said, I'm privileged as a director to be directing you. It's like it's my honor yeah. that I'm in this phase of. Movie making and directing, where you exist, like I can't take any credit for Alia Bhatt, barring the fact that I launched her in the first film. I always say her emotional launch is Student of the Year, but her professional launch is Highway. I have nothing to do with Alia Bhatt's acting genius today. That is her and the filmmakers that gave her those parts. Right. Whether it was Abhishek Chobe, it was Imtiaz Ali. It is now Sanjay Leela Bansali. It is Gauri Shinde, Shakun Batra, Shashank Khetan, Abhishek Varman. These are the directors that have given her such juicy, strong parts, and she has been able to emerge as an actor. I gave her the least challenging role of her entire career, and I always say that everybody comes and gives me so much credit for Alia, and I was like, I don't deserve any of it. Are you making up for that with Rocky and Rani? I'm just so excited she's in my movie. Like nine years later, I'm like, yay! Like Alia Bhatt's in our film, like, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, and I think I told her, I said, don't do it because it's me. Do it because you love what you, what you love what you hear or the script. Of course, though, I don't think that's really going to be her thing. She's going to work with me whenever I ask her to because she just feels like she's a loyalist by nature. Which should never be the case because an actor should always get on board only if they believe and he or she believe in the part. But I'm telling you, it is just a privilege. I always pray for her that because it's too much too soon. Like I've heard, like Shah Rukh once said that about her to me. He says, "Too much too soon." She has to always be on top of her game, you know, because she's she's too good too soon. Yeah, she's too good too Was soon. Was that in a Coffee with Karan episode? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think he said yeah. that. Yeah. I believe it. I believe now she has to constantly be on top of her own game. 
like she can't be looking beyond her shoulder and she has to just keep saying are main apne aap ko kaise behtar bana sakti hu it's like really that so yeah but just want to put it out there i can't take any credit much as i love to i read a quote of yours that says i'm very much a product of my instinct can you tell me a time your instinct was right when everybody else around you thought it was wrong and one time when your instinct went totally totally wrong kapoor and sons was a uh, something that people didn't buy into in the readings in and it was rejected by six leading actors a lot of people in my own team saw it heard the script earlier than saw it didn't believe in it as much i my instinct told me this film's going to be just special that is one time that i feel my instinct was validated what did i love that didn't land you know i have to say and i'm not sounding I hope I'm not seeing it and is coming across in any other way. I've always known the films that may not perform. I may not have articulated it outwardly not to hurt a filmmaker or a lead actor that's associated. I could say that it's a 5 on 10, we'll make the money, but it won't create the ripple. I know it. I know when it's a 2 on 10. You know, I know when a disaster's coming your way, I've seen it already. Right. I may not say it because you want to love everything you do. but not i i've seen it in a, many a time i've been harsh and i've seen it completely um but sometimes i think if anybody's really clever enough and tunes into me and how i'm marketing the movie you'll know whether i like it or not and i'll tell you why because the films that i really love i don't go into overdrive i go into overdrive when i'm fearing something <laughs> so if you really really and why should you care so much to look at my strategy because it's mine and not anybody else's but it's not, it's what i'm doing just personally for my own self but yeah i can tell so i don't think that my instinct where i thought was going to be great and it failed me no actually hasn't happened i've never been so i so it's happened that some films i thought would do better but it still did very well right so those i'm not saying to because that's sometimes external factors yeah. you know another release came like i remember there was a tiny film we made we back called hasi to pasi which i really love i really loved it did nicely it did sweet business but it got squeezed between two big films yeah. so if it had to do 50 crores it ended up doing 38 but that still got love you know so it was fine but i felt that that should done 12 crores more you know 15 crores more those are just my own barometers then i gone up but then some films i thought will do 100 and like, like razi i thought oh in 80 90 it will do <laughs> it does 125 crores and i'm like okay that's great like you know that's also happened your instinct was what made you pick up baubali right yeah. like like kind of a thing absolutely but even with your instinct did you expect these numbers no okay how can you yeah how can you expect that it will be a telugu film that will be the number one hindi business <laughs> ever <laughs> who's going to say it right who's going to even predict this it's like if that person can predict this then that person should have predicted covid as well <laughs> you're making rock here rani for the longest time no one heard anything about it because it is all tak 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 that was what you were talking about and then suddenly this announcement drops was it a script that you were developing already no okay i decided to temporarily keep tucked on hold in the month of end of march april actually mid april april may june and july is when i wrote rocky rani okay you know i had one idea was popping in in my head in and out but i thought i look at it and i had all the time in the lockdown to write it i wrote it with three writers um you know sumit roy who was writing tucked with me shashank khetan who's one of our yeah. strongest directors as um worked extensively with me on the screenplay and then finally huge support massively talented ishita moitra um she came in and really did all the finalizing finishing you know really gratifying touches to the film um i had a strong writing support team in all the ishita also wrote the dialogue um it was wonderful like everyone was aligned with me everyone was aligned with each other it all happened quite fast what kind of movie is it i don't tell me it's a prem kahani because that's what it is but what i'm asking is is it something that will push you forward as a filmmaker the way edil hemushkil did do you think that's happening i don't know what you mean by that uh, i think this has the ability to do a stronger commercial number right. has the ability again right. i say you know i'm 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 choosing my words very carefully uh because i don't want to co- commit and then i'll be thrown the business back in the year one syntax is far more mainstream uh right. it, it's also saying a few things of right. relevance right. but uh it's not breaking any um uh, uh 
cinematic boundary. I don't think the film is taking any unconventional leaps in that way. It's pretty much a family drama which has songs and emotion oh, yeah. and drama. But it's a film that I haven't made since say Kuch Kuch or Kabhi Kushi when I mean the tonality wise. Right. So it's like me going back to my own earlier work. Right. In terms of just the tonality. Right. That's the one thing. So if you've enjoyed those movies and you can have an unapologetic fun time at the movies, this is that film. No, but I don't know why you 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 always refer to movies like Lagan or or something else. It's like it's not that. It's like you can make a perfectly nice mainstream film that doesn't what make is. boundaries. This it's is, it's yeah. like and this is not that is, but but you don't understand. I'm once bitten many times shy because I've also because you might be um, a more broad-minded uh, you know film analytic uh, film crit critic. But there are others that, that question when you go back to doing things that Indian cinema has grown up on. I've read reviews of all my own movies that I've said Old Wine in New Bottle, Same Formula, Karanjor doing what he does best, Rich People Problems. I'm so like used to reading these kind of things that mujhe, I don't think I get like if I break a cinematic boundary also it'll be like Mar Mar Ke they will say. That you know, despite his him as a director, he manages to surprise. Like in in love stories, I remember reading so many reviews. Shockingly, <laughs> surprisingly, and like there was one review that said, "Okay, let me get this one off my chest." Karan Johar made the best film in this anthology, and I'm like, <laughs> like, itna kya hai ya? I mean, you know, kuch kar liya hai, to dil se tarif karo. But nahi hota mere saath. So that's why I'm always apologizing, which I shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, but I'm apologizing because. I'm not apologizing to them, I'm just telling them, right. I mean, I mean, it is what it is, but I am I loving it? Yes. Do I want to constantly do it? Yes. Yeah. This is the cinema that I grew up on? Yes. This is what I'm proud about? Yes. You don't like it? I'll appreciate your, your feedback, but I can't do anything about it. This is who I am. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, am I going to be taking leaps when they say that, oh, switching genres is a leap? Like, not that. Making an action film, suppose I made a thriller, or I'm making a like whatever, but I've done those. And yet it's been slotted in the same box. When I made Kabhi Alvidana Kena, it was still called that, put in the same box as K3G and Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. You know, like for some reason it doesn't matter when I break ground or not, I still get slotted. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm yeah. like, now nah, if you're going to slot me, then what if, why should I give you any, any anything to say about it? It's not me, it's fine. Yeah. No, Kabhi Alvidana Kena is actually, you know, I, I think it is far ahead of its time. No, and here also, I don't want to tell you I'm feeling at all victimized by any of this because I'm still reading everybody's opinions. Yeah. You, but. I am just saying it as it is. Right. There is a baggage, a certain cinema critic sits on that seat with and that baggage is something I cannot take off. Right. Most of them. Trolls don't bother me, then why should critics bother me? <laughs> they're, at least they are intelligent trolls, if they are trolling you. In general, <laughs> at least they are coming and I really respect everyone's judgement. I, I absolutely love reading everyone's reviews because I feel I learn a thing or two and there are many valid things said also. When Takht was first announced, my first uh, reaction was, this sounds so much like a Vansali film and what is Karan going to do, like, like how would his version of a, uh, that film look like? Without like telling anything about the film, which is like, what was your treatment of, of, the, of the whole thing? Uh, that would have made it yours. Very earlier on, I knew that the comparisons were inevitable. They would come because I was going into this period historical zone and the only master of that domain has been Bansali and has made some fantastic movies in that zone. I was like, I can be two things. I can try consciously to be so different that I, God knows where I land. Or I can just do what my instinct is telling me. I've also emulated Yash Chopra. I've also emulated Raj Kapoor. I've also emulated many filmmakers, Gurudat. I've done so much of like copy paste in my own time, in my own way. So even if I had to be inspired by Mansari, I would do it in my way. It would be fine. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there would be a lot of me that would come in. But I was not planning to get so conscious that I do something bad just because I don't want to actually emulate right. something that's good. Right. Right. So I'm like, I have no problem if you compare me to somebody who's good. Fine. Okay. Like, you know, I have no problem. And I was very aware and I told the team, please let's not, because they would say, oh, but uh, Sanjay Lila Bansani has done this, a war scene. I said, but there are wars fought across the, across history. 
Now war is a war. When we shoot a war, they will look in a similar way only. There are horses riding towards each other. There are swords that will be drawn. Now what do you do? There are people in capes and headgear. Now what can I do if Bansali has done it? Now I do. I will put him on a pedestal and probably emulate some of that. Because I do think right. that he is the master of that domain. Right. And so if I have to be inspired, I will. I was not trying to run away from that at all. Right. Many showbiz parents, they protect their children, uh, don't show them out in the media, you know, make, make sure that they're not exposed to a certain kind of uh, pap kind of culture. But you revel in putting out yeah. uh, videos of your children with those, you know, entertaining uh, kind of scenarios that you kind yeah. of do with, you know, in your closet or whatever yeah. it is kind of a thing. Is the attitude like, okay, anyway you're going to do this, so let me do it myself. Is that the attitude? Actually, it happened very organically again. It was a lockdown. We were all at home. The kids were bored. You know, I was occupying them. I, they would come and hang out in my room. I would go in theirs. And I started doing these videos. Initially, it was just sending it to group chats of our friends. Once I shared one, and then I saw that there was so much joyousness. Oh. You know, there was so much love. Uh, and I never get a lot of love. You know, I get a lot of trolls and I get some strange emojis that come with my name. And I was like, my role as a parent, uh, you know, uh, is something that I, I, I treat them like 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 we're hanging out as as friends so i just thought when i put out that zone it was just getting so there was so much joyousness in the bleakest time of our lives i said let me do it and it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother you. yeah but if somebody asked me that will your children do a commercial with you no will they come on a film set and shoot an ad no <laughs> will i take them to a public event and make them stand on stage no there are certain no's no 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 but if, the, if I want to put out stuff that is completely harmless and fun and spreading joy and there's so many millions of people that are smiling and laughing and loving it, I feel I'm spreading joy. And when was that a problem? Your pr pr primary genre has been drama. Yeah. Uh, is there something else that, that you want to try? Like, will Karan Johar ever make a sci-fi film? Action. Uh, action. Okay. I'm dying to do. Okay. I feel like there's a suppressed anger in me and I think that'll come out, I, I'll live it vicariously through that film. Like, oh I feel like, like I, we discussed right at the top of the interview that I don't get angry, but I think I've suppressed a lot of my anger. I feel, I think I'm very angry from it. Where is the anger coming from? The baggage of things. Okay. I think a baggage of life experiences, a baggage of circumstances in my life, a baggage of not having vocalized what I feel to certain people, to certain institutions, to certain forces. I, I feel I've kept it all within myself. And I think what is trans translated is that that baggage that I'm carrying has become a, this big ball of anger and I feel like I need to throw it somewhere and what better than into a zone of inspiration. So I think this ball of anger is going to make a very angry action film. And a very therapeutic action film. Totally. Yeah. For me making Edil was therapy and so will the Vis. And I told you I will be on the floors in the month of March making this, perhaps this action film. Fantastic. Thank you, Karan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barry. It was so <laughs> lovely to chat with you, as always. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>